You could describe your quarterback as BT. I mean, what physical changes did you notice when he came back? Yeah, he, I mean, he, he looks like one year older of a man, you know. Um, just being able to focus uh, since January on his diet and, and his body to, to just put himself in the best situation from an athletic standpoint, you know, and he really bought into it. Anything he does, like, he's, like, so fully invested to it, you know, and you can see that. Like, it meant something to him. So he, you know, hired the right people that, that, that they felt was going to put um, him in the best situation to be that, that athlete that he wants to be, you know, from, from a physical standpoint. So he looks good. I mean, you can see it in the lower half, especially, I mean, his legs, I mean, they're – they're, uh, I don't want to use the word beefy, but they're, uh, they're, they're bigger and stronger. So it's, it's a cool transfer. And I know he's happy with uh, where he's at physically. Aside from him looking like a bigger guy, have you noticed or, or seen some of the changes in his performance and his play that you hope to see? At yeah, this point? It, it, particularly the processing. You know, there was a few things. Uh, we had a laundry list, I'd say, after the season because you're, you're emotional after 17 games in a training camp in, in uh, OTAs. And so you have a laundry list for every player. Uh, um, but then when you sit back, you take a few weeks after the season, you sit back, and then you go through the process of actually evaluating the scheme and the players, you really start to pinpoint the two or three things that you want to focus on. It was it was um, good to be able to say, hey, you know what, that wasn't as big of a problem. Let's focus on these two or three things. And you're seeing that from a physical standpoint. From a mental standpoint, obviously all these guys going into year two, whether it be the rookies or even a guy like Corey Davis, when you're just in an offense for the second year, you don't have to learn what words mean anymore. Now you just have to learn how can I be the most detailed with it and play the fast I can uh, to, to perform on Sundays. Um, that's been two really cool things. And then really the last, just in the huddle, um, he's so comfortable before I give him a play that he's dapping it up with everybody else, talking to him as I'm saying a play. And that just tells you right there, like he kind of knows what is being said and then can just obviously relay it to the guy. So it's, it's been pretty cool from all those uh, angles. You mentioned uh, Corey Davis right there. What, what, how has he looked coming back from injury and how can – how has he responded to Garrett Wilson coming? Like, how can they help each other? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's looked great. You know, he's uh, he put, just like Zach, just like a lot of these guys, uh, everyone's focus is uh, going to be a little bit different in their three or four months that they're not in the building. Uh, his was getting healthy and, and uh, career longevity for that matter. Uh, so I know he put a lot of time in Nashville. Uh, he looks great. He's, he's always looked the part from a you know, physical standpoint. So he looks good. He, he's moving good. Um, the, there's that balance of um, uh, these OTAs in phase two of getting a lot of work with Zach because Zach's only in his second year, so there's still a timing element between those two, but also making sure that he is in tip-top shape come uh, September. So um, he's he's looked good and in, in, in good spirits. Um, and then you know it's, he's he's going into what is his sixth year, and uh, so anytime you've played in this league for six years and been a first-round pick, uh, as high as uh, as Garrett, you know he's going to have uh, some pieces of advice that I'm not even going to hear from him. It's just going to be player to player and, and a vet to a rookie. So I know he's helping him there. Mike, what, what did you learn last year as a first time? play caller and uh, how do you think you have evolved from say the start of last season to the end of last season yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, because you're just, and I think I said it's last December and January, you're just kind of in the moment, you know. And um, what I learned is more about our players and, and what our scheme for the New York Jets is going to be compared to wherever else I've been. Um, we were different in Cleveland in 14, and then going to Atlanta with Matt Ryan and Julio and stuff like that. Our offense evolved in San Francisco uh, to where it got to with guys like Debo and, and stuff like that. So um, every year, the, the system and the foundation is the same. Game, you just got to figure out, and, and the faster you figure it out, uh, what your players can do best and what your 11 guys are going to do, um, then you evolve with it and you roll with it because ultimately it's really not, it doesn't matter what the system is, it's what your players can do and putting them in the right uh, position to be successful. Job. It is a fun job. It's, it's, I, I said this last year too, this is, this is, everything I wanted personally, and I hate to use the word I, but it's everything I wanted. Um, I wanted to, um, to, to be in front of that room through the good, through the bad, and uh, you know, see how, what my body would uh, go through. And, uh, and I enjoyed it, and I, I really enjoyed it, and I couldn't wait to, for these guys to get back and, and get working with them. How difficult was it? You had a, the offense struggled at the start. How difficult was that on you? Um, 
again, you're it, on me. I don't, not so much. Like it, it, it was difficult watching our players struggle. You know, in terms of us not being successful as an offense, I always going to put it on myself as the coordinator. I'm the one calling the plays and, and putting together a plan with our staff. Um, and when they're when it's not working in this league, that's not that's not fun. But part of the fun is you know getting in on Mondays, correcting it, getting in uh, in on Wednesdays, giving them a new plan, and then you know getting them to buy into the plan because ultimately when you're not having success, doubt is going to creep in. And how can you find ways to make sure that doubt isn't going to creep in? And it's just keeping it real with the guys. I think we did that. And I think, uh, you know, as, as you saw, I thought we grew together uh, as a group and, and really have uh, trust uh, for each other from player to coach and coach to player. With the, with the quarterback in year two and players now knowing the offense better and also a lot of new pieces, are you kind of anxious to see how much better this unit can be this year? Yeah, uh, certainly. I mean, you want to be obviously the best you can, but what I'm anxious for right now is just seeing how good we can get through these OTAs, and that's the truth. Like, September is a long ways away. Even putting the pads on for uh, for training camps a long ways away. So right now the focus is, is for just each and every individual to get as good as they can, connect as much as they can in terms of off the field, but obviously on the field with the timing and, and uh, aspect of it, particularly from the pass game because that's kind of what these OTAs have turned into it's it's turned into more of a passing camp and then you know the run games more in that jog through so um again just the focus being on right now and, and get, uh, being as good as we can be what, said, what, do you, what do you see from garrett wilson do you think he's going to be able to bring well i mean everyone studied him in their own way obviously uh you know in this room um the thing that you don't know until you actually get someone in the building is how much they really care about learning uh, the, the ins and outs, the details of, of the scheme and, and um, just kind of the details of the route running. And he is so locked into that stuff. And I, I, I'm probably understating that, you know. And, again, you, you knew that talking to their coaches at Ohio State and, and all the awesome work our scouts do. Uh, but until you actually see it in person and, and you can look into someone's eyes knowing that, wow, this really does mean something to them in terms of learning it as fast as humanly possible um, it's, that's what's been uh, really cool the player um, you know he's going to be a rookie he's going to go through his ups and downs like like they all do uh, hopefully more ups and hopefully uh, you know as I, I preach to these guys the urgency this league doesn't wait for anybody coaches or players you know so you don't have to wait till year two to be uh, the best player you can be we can get it done now but we have to be urgent with our focus Mike, how can you uh, I think Zach's completion was like 55 last year can you take a point like how can you make him a more accurate passer? or how can he make himself a yeah it, it, it's and I, I think I did say Say this in December too. Like a lot of a lot of his issues were um, maybe trying to see too much, as opposed to this offense has turned into a lot of just pure progressions. You, you really don't even need to know what eight or nine guys on the defense are doing. And we kind of laugh at that in the quarterback room right now. Like it really doesn't matter what they're doing over there. You just go through your progressions. You read with your feet and you get the ball out. And so if you're looking in the right spots. When, when even last year when he was looking in the right spots, his body fouled, and he's an accurate quarterback like he has been his whole his whole career. Uh, one of the, the biggest focus was the eyes, getting your eyes in the right spot at the right time, and uh, and that is a, a focus that we're going to continue these last OTAs, obviously, and then throughout training camp to make sure we are so ready to roll um, in September. You guys, had a lot of, you guys had a lot of quarterback coaches sort of thing involved last year, you yeah. know. This year it's been trimmed down a little yeah. bit. You know, Calabrese is in there, you're in there. How much of a – I know it was beneficial last year having those guys, but how how do things change this year? It's – it's um, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It's – it's been good just to have uh, just the two voices, you know, in terms of just what, what we feel like that quarterback room needs uh, right now. Um, you know, last year was as, as well documented. We, we went in with a plan, and, and the plan changed, um, you know, uh, out of out of everyone's circumstance and it sucked uh, you know but uh, we brought in Matt Cavanaugh and he helped me in ways and Zach and in the quarterback rooms just having that experience playing in the league and then coaching the league and then obviously uh, Beck just being a familiar voice for him uh, but we got to all step back uh, in January think about what's going to be best for uh, for two for Mike White and, and obviously for Joe um, and uh, it's it's been really good I, I have so much confidence in, in Rob Calabrese you know we'll see what what the results bring uh, but he is a really 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 good football coach and a great communicator and a great person. So he's uh, he's been phenomenal. He sees things really well. So how difficult would it be to add in all these pieces for you? You know, now you got another receiver, two tight ends, a new running back. So how difficult would it be to integrate all those pieces for you? 
Um, I hope not too difficult, you know, but there is only one ball, and I'm sure we'll have that uh, conversation in the uh, in the room at some point. But ultimately, if you got the right guys uh, organically, uh, it, it'll all figure itself out, and they'll understand. They, guys just want to move the ball and have success. And, and yeah, you, you want to provide that success, but uh, each and every week could be a little bit different, you know. And, um, uh, you, again, I'll t just going to my past experiences, uh, in 2016 with Julio, he was going to get a lot of targets, but that ball still got spread around to Devontae Freeman, Sanu, and, and Austin Hooper, and we ran the ball well. And then in 19, it was very much different. Our, our starting receivers in the beginning of the year were way different by the time that Debo got going as a rookie to the trading for Emmanuel Sanders to Kendrick Bourne coming on to George Kittle still being who George Kittle was and the top of our run game. Like, it's a very good problem to have. You know, we're, we're, we're young. Guys are still learning how to play. Uh, but we got, we got you know, pieces to work with. And uh, it'll, it'll be fun and a challenge at the same time uh, getting this thing all to mesh together. Reflecting back on, on last year and the process of evaluating Zach um, and now seeing what he has done the last year, what did you learn about yourself as, as a quarterback evaluator and as the main offensive voice for this organization? Um, again, that's a, it's a good question. You know, um, that, that evaluation process seems like uh, so long ago. And again, it's kind of like I was just answering with Garrett. You don't you don't really know everything about someone, even though you put so much time into it. Uh, you know, you got to get around them. And, and again, I. I, I I, I'm really not going to answer your question there in terms of uh, what I've learned about from an evaluator. It's just learning about the person and, and what it takes to get him uh, to understand what you're saying and, uh, and all these guys, but, but the question being towards Zach and uh, making it, um, you know, uh, hit with, within our offense and, and what you're teaching. Do you, feel, yeah, how, do you feel any pressure, I don't know if that's the right word, to help get Zach to another level? Uh, pressure, no urgency, yes. You know, I mean, again, it's this this league doesn't care. Like, if, if if you don't like pressure in this league, you're in the wrong league. So you better be able to just deal with that. Uh, but the urgency to get it done, get it done the right way, uh, but also in, in an urgent matter that you know we got to get better every single day, starting right now. If we I, we play. I know we play Baltimore week one. I have no idea who we play week two, and I don't care. And I really don't care about Baltimore right now. I care about just, again, our guys, our quarterback room, our, our entire unit just getting better right now, you urgently. Mike, Mike, how do you plan on um, figuring out the tackle situation, which side George is on, which side Makai is on, especially right now, either one of them are off right, the field. Right, right. No, I know George is uh, – I talked to him um, on Thursday of last week and uh, FaceTimed him, and he was he had a full-on sweat going from Florida working on, uh, you know, what he needs to work on. Um, that stuff's going to work itself out. Uh, it, it, it always does, you know. And, again, right now the focus doesn't have to be who our 11 starters are. It has to be each and every guy getting a little bit better. Um, obviously, we know uh, Mikai not being here. Um, you know, and I know you guys know this, but he he, he just had the kid, and uh, he's and it's gonna be cool because he's gonna be a cool dad. I know he's gonna have a big smile on his face when he gets back here. I, you know, um, I just hope uh, obviously he's putting himself in the best situation for uh, to come through and uh, you know be the best Mackay uh, that he can be. Did you say last three is gonna be Bob, DJ, and Did you say before in, during Steve's one on one with you um, <laughs> <laughs> that you wanted to see what your body? Go through. Yeah, it it's just, it's just an interesting and, and that's kind of how I've always explained it even before last year to, to I guess myself and to my wife and my family like what some people don't want to do this and I, I want to see what kind of heart rate I'd have when I got in front of the room on a Monday after we uh, didn't play well because it is you're, you're in front of you know 30 or so grown men uh, that want to figure out how we're going to win in this league because when you win in this league it suits everybody uh, most importantly the players you know and so when you're not winning as a as a as a leader and as a coordinator um, you got to figure that out out. And you got to figure out and verbally in, in terms of how to talk to them and motivate them and get them to believe. And uh, and so that's what I wanted before the season. Um, and that's exactly what went on throughout the season. It was I, I liked how I responded to it personally. And again, I hate to use the word I, but that's that's just the truth of it. Uh, the, the gym might be because my uh, wife loves to work out. If I don't right now, it's going to be bad. So. <laughs> To follow up on Rich's question, you really said like the eight, the eight defenders don't really matter when it comes to um, <coughs> career progression. So how does a quarterback determine where his eyes should be? Um, I guess basically pre or post snap. It's it's a, such an awesome question because it's it's 
there's there's so many different facets within a, a passing game in this league, right? Like you have quick game, you got your kind of your quick hitting drop back, what we call our completion plays. You got your intermediate game where you're going to be taking seven step drops, getting double chips just so your protection can hold up. You got your turn your back play pass game that's going to take your vertical shots. Each play, however many concepts we have, let's say we just have 60 of them. 10 are going to go into each category. How can you make out of those 10? It looks a little to a defense, but seven of those 10 are literally quarterback the exact same play. So your eyes go to the exact same spot. And so as you go through, uh, obviously, full speed OTAs and training camp, yeah, you get the full speed rep because, I mean, that's that's real football. But that's why the walkthroughs are so important just for a quarterback to train his eyes, to hear the play call, go back to what you learned in the film room, even without the film, the board work, and go through that process of getting my eyes in the right spot if I'm not throwing a ball over 10 yards why do I care where the safeties are you don't you just look at number one if one's open within the timing of what we've taught in our footwork and those routes on air you throw it to him if he's not you progress it two. and then you got to decide as I'm getting down to a check down pocket collapse do I run and go make a play which Zach does very well or do I get the ball to the check down that's that's whatever he's feeling at that moment any quarterback because you just never know it's all going to be a little bit different you know so um, it's a good question it's something that um, I feel like Robin and myself and the quarterbacks have uh, really tried to hone in on in terms of being able to group that stuff together for them you guys prioritize tight end during the offseason so how do you think that's going to help you to have these experienced guys as a play caller and how do you think it can help Zach with it? Yeah, it, it, I loved our tight end room last year um, in terms of just just the guys and it was just unfortunate that um, you know Croft and and, uh, and Ryan um, just they just didn't stay as, as healthy as they would have liked and, and you felt bad for them in that uh, process but it's the league and uh, you know we uh, brought in two tight ends that we feel like can really help us CJ being a guy that uh, had a great year last year has had great years before that coming in in 2015 not only that you brought in a guy that came from a locker room that went to the uh, Super Bowl last year, which is such an underrated component to, uh, to to free agency and bringing in the right people. And then you got Conklin, who um, has been in for four years, played basketball early on in his career at Northwood, transfers to Central, so he goes kind of on draft because he wasn't really a football player to the scouts. And next thing you know, uh, after two, uh, two years, really turns it up and, and has the best year he did last year. On top of it, he's only – I believe missed one game in his career maybe zero I can't I'm, I might be mixing that up but so to have that availability from a guy that's uh, I believe his best football is in front of him and he's been able to stay on the field every single game of his career uh, that is such a plus and, and such an underrated component thank you everyone